So let's spend some time right now talking about this, higher level thinking tasks. When we talk about designing higher level thinking tasks for our students, we're either talking about the learning activities that take place as part of the lesson, or the assessment tasks that we ask our students to engage in so that we can better measure and evaluate their progress towards learning goals. Often when we talk about higher level thinking tasks, we start with taxonomies, taxonomies like Bloom's taxonomy. And when we see taxonomy, we're talking about a way to organize different elements or components within a framework or a hierarchy. So here's a snapshot of Bloom's taxonomy. We have different cognitive tasks arranged from the bottom to the top by their degree of difficulty. At the bottom, we have remembering, followed by understanding, then applying, then analyzing, evaluating, and creating or synthesizing ideas. And you can also look at how the same concept could be posed to students either in question or task form at different levels of Bloom's taxonomy. At the remembering level, we could ask our students, what are Newton's three laws of motion? At the understanding level, we could ask them to explain Newton's three laws of motion in their own words. When we get to applying, we are asking our students to apply a concept or skill in a context that we provide. For example, calculate the kinetic energy of a projectile. The next level up would be analyzing. For example, categorizing each of the following situations as an example of either kinetic or potential energy. Then asking students to explain in detail why they categorized it the way that they did. An example of evaluating could look like this. Would A, conservation of energy, or B, conservation of momentum be more appropriate for solving the following dynamics problem? When we get to the level of creating, we're not talking about just gluing and pasting things together, but rather synthesizing our findings into a new original solution. For example, design an original homework problem dealing with the principle of conservation of energy. Higher level thinking would focus on the upper levels of blooms. Asking students to analyze, evaluate, and create, in other words, synthesize ideas. Now, we're not saying that these are the only types of tasks that we want our students to engage in. There is a place and a time for remembering, understanding, and applying. For example, think about how often in the scriptures you see the word remember, remember. Or, as you're reading the Book of Mormon, you'll hear an intrusive voice of a narrator, such as Mormon himself, who will pause and point out things that he wants us to understand or how often we are asked to apply or put into practice something that we've been taught. But as teachers, if we're not careful, we can spend too much time focusing on the bottom part of Bloom's and not spend enough time asking them to engage in these higher cognitive skills. In addition to Bloom's, another framework that can be considered when we design higher level thinking tasks for our students is Webb's Depth of Knowledge, also known as Webb's D-O-K. In this framework, learning tasks and assessments are broken into four categories. Level one being recall, where students are asked to perform simple skills and abilities, such as following a simple, well-known procedure or formula. A slightly deeper and more challenging task might focus on a depth of two. In other words, conceptual knowledge or putting facts in context. This could include the engagement of some mental processing beyond recalling or reproducing a response. Often these tasks require students to make some decision as to how to approach the question or the problem. A level two task often implies more than one mental or cognitive process or step to be followed. But if we're talking about deeper level thinking, on Webb's depth of knowledge, higher level thinking is equated with deeper levels on Webb's, or the bottom half, for example, level three or depth of three, strategic thinking and decision making. These are tasks that require deep understanding in the form of planning, using evidence, and more often, more demand of cognitive reasoning. These are also the types of tasks that have more than one possible answer and require students to justify the response. Higher level thinking tasks are also at a depth of four on Webb's depth of knowledge, where we ask students to use extended thinking to synthesize information. These are the types of tasks that require students to engage in high cognitive challenges of complexity. Students are expected to make connections, relate ideas within the content, and even among different content areas. Students themselves have to select or even devise an approach among many different alternatives. Due to the complexity and cognitive demand of these tasks, they often require an extended period of time to complete. 
So for example, here are some tasks that are at a depth of one on Webb's depth of knowledge. While all of these potential activities are important, this isn't quite deep enough if we're seeking to develop higher level thinking tasks. Tasks at a depth of two, where students are working with skills and concepts and putting them into context, are described here. And this gets us closer, but is still not deep enough on Webb's depth of knowledge. In this course, our challenge is at least to get to a depth of three, or to engage students in short-term strategic thinking. So you see that learning tasks and assessments that fall into this category can be completed in a relatively short term, but still use higher order thinking processes, such as analysis, evaluation, especially to solve real world problems with predictable outcomes. For example, conducting an investigation to produce information to support a view, preparing and using a list of criteria to judge or evaluate something. These types of learning activities and assessments are at a level that we would consider higher level thinking. At a depth of four, we are asking our students to engage in extended strategic thinking. This is when we ask our students to engage in higher order thinking processes, such as synthesis, reflection, assessment, and adjustment of plans over time. Instead of single simple problems, students are asked to employ and sustain strategic thinking processes over a longer period of time to solve larger, more open-ended problems. Though it's important to engage students in level four tasks, it's important to keep in mind that they often aren't able to be completed in a single class period or lesson. A helpful resource is a HESS matrix or a matrix of assessment tasks in different content areas. You can either search for Karen HESS Cognitive Rigor Matrix or go to this web address right here. At this site, we can see that Dr. Karen HESS and her colleagues have put together a matrix of different tasks in reading, math and science, written and oral communication, as well as social studies and humanities. Matrices have also been developed for fine arts, health and physical education, world languages, as well as career and technical education. So let's say that I'm working on a content standard and a learning objective that has to do with reading. If I click on this link, I find a matrix or a table layout of Bloom's taxonomy, as well as Webb's depth of knowledge. On the left hand side, I can see that the further down on the table a task is, the more challenging it is based on Bloom's taxonomy. Likewise, I can see that at the top, the further right a task is, the more cognitively challenging it is on Webb's depth of knowledge. So if I want to see some examples of tasks that are at least at a depth of three on Webb's depth of knowledge, I would go to the third column and look at the types of tasks listed. The further down on the chart they are, the more likely they are to be deeper level thinking tasks or higher level thinking tasks for our students. So please take some time and go to this website that has the Cognitive Rigor and Depth of Knowledge Matrix by Dr. Karen Hess. Find the matrix that is most closely related to the content standard and learning goal that you're working on, and then examine columns three and columns four to see deeper, higher level thinking tasks. Other examples of higher level thinking tasks can be found in the work of Robert Marzano, who offered up six different types of tasks that engage students in cognitive rigor. Problem solving tasks that follow these steps, identifying a goal, describing the barriers or constraints, identifying likely solutions, trying out different solutions, and then explaining to what degree they were successful, and then determining if a need exists to create or test another solution. We also have decision-making tasks that have clear and interrelated cognitive steps, historical investigations, asking students to engage in the process of invention by describing situations they wish to improve, identifying whatever standards could be used to improve the situation or meet the need, brainstorming different ideas, and then hypothesizing the likelihood of each idea's success, then identifying potential solutions, drafting, sketching, or creating a prototype, and of course, testing and if necessary, revising the prototype. Students can and should also be asked to engage in systems analysis, 
as well as experimental inquiry. Our third and final taxonomy is the SOLO taxonomy. SOLO stands for Structure of the Observed Learning Outcome. The SOLO taxonomy can be used to help us gauge a student's competence or lack of competence by looking at the quality of their performance. Tasks or student performance that only involves one relevant aspect, such as identifying, naming, following a simple procedure, demonstrates some but little competency. When students are asked to and succeed in combining, describing, enumerating, performing serial skills in a list, when students engage several of these relevant independent aspects, they demonstrate even more competence. But just as with our other taxonomies, the more challenging the task, the better able students are to grasp and retain a concept, as well as to demonstrate competence. For example, we ask our students to engage in several integrated and related steps or cognitive processes, such as analyzing, applying, arguing, comparing and contrasting, criticizing, explaining causes, relating and justifying. A student who is able to successfully complete these cognitive processes demonstrates higher level thinking and a higher degree of competence. With the solo taxonomy, the highest level of competence are demonstrated by students who are asked to generalize interrelated skills and thinking processes into a new context or a new domain as they formulate, generate, hypothesize, reflect, and theorize. So let's take a look at a learning task given to students, and an example of student work that will help us see what each of these levels of solo look like. The question posed could be, what causes the traffic problem in Sydney, Australia? A response that does not demonstrate any competency would be pre-structural. It misses the point. For example, a student might respond, the traffic is always bad. The traffic problem is caused by cars. Students begin to develop a higher level of thinking when they respond with something like this. We have a traffic problem in Sydney because there are too many cars. A response such as, there are too many cars in Sydney and there are not enough roads and the government does not control the traffic well. There is always a traffic jam. Shows that a student can recognize several relevant yet still independent aspects of a problem. Our goal as teachers is to push our students to the higher levels of the solo taxonomy by inviting them to engage in relational thinking where students can identify that there are too many cars limited road space, poor traffic management, poor city planning, overused roads that require regular maintenance, which further reduces usable road space, as well as poor traffic management and city planning that leads to ineffective road use. Here we can see that students can identify different aspects, but also are starting to see the connections between them. The highest level of competency, though, could be demonstrated as students show that they can generalize these ideas to a new domain. For example, what causes the traffic problem in Sydney? We want to structure activities for our students that ask them to discuss all the causes of the traffic problem and their interrelations. We want them to be able to point out that like many other social problems, the key issue is proper management of limited resources. Our students should suggest research that should be conducted to identify key problem areas and even compare the situation with other cities. The idea being that in a solo taxonomy, greater levels of competence are demonstrated as students engage in higher level thinking tasks. Now, whether we're talking about Bloom's taxonomy, Webb's depth of knowledge, or a solo taxonomy, we should seek to develop learning activities and assessment tasks that challenge students to engage in higher level thinking. When we design summative assessments for our students, we should look closely at the content standards and learning objectives and then determine whether it's best suited to a product assessment, a performance assessment, or a process-focused assessment. When we identify the best match between the learning objectives and the assessment, we can then look for opportunities to engage our students in higher-level thinking tasks.